There we go. Uh, so this is my final film of the year. It's from this great set. Another Eclipse series from Criterion. I watched the first film on it, um, Wings, a few months ago. And now I, today I watched The Ascent. Now, I have one thing I want to say before I start talking about this movie. This is a great movie. Larissa, Larissa Shapitko. I always say that wrong. This is a great director. The Ascent is set during World War II and is about morality during war versus survival and sort of consciousness versus survival, right? Also stars men. Wings is a film about a war hero pilot who is a woman who then has trouble adjusting to civilian life, specifically civilian life as a woman who was a warrior, right? Very feminist film. Not a very feminist film, has a handful of women, mostly about two dudes. Now, both films are great, right? This is considered her masterpiece and was actually her final film because uh, she died, like many a great artist, in a car accident shortly after filming it or while she was scouting in the next location for her next film. And what I've noticed, I'm going to drink some tea while saying this because it's none of my business, but I've noticed that films... In watching uh, 300 plus films by women this year, the notable films by women that tend to rise up through the ranks, aka because men talk about them, are films that are about men. And not, not to say that like women shouldn't make films about men and that women make bad films about men, but what I've noticed is if a woman makes a film about men, it's going to get written about, it's going to get talked about, and it's going to make it into the canon. Uh... But very, very rarely if a film is about a woman and made by women and talking about women's issues, do they get talked about. You have like Agnes Varda and Jean Dillon and then you're done. And, and that's about it in terms of canon. But like look at, if you look at the most popular films by women, the most talked about films by women, then the lead is a man. And I think that's bullshit. And I've spent an entire year watching so many great films by women mostly about women and then people are like I've never heard of this and I'm like you know why because fucking men don't talk about films by women that are about women and that is bullshit and I'm sick of it sick of it that said this is a great set you should get both these films I liked Wings a little bit more I I, I liked the feminist um sort of message of Wings now The Ascent it's two dudes who are trying to do their duty and then shit goes down and they're tested and and you you have to see like where your conscious lies in terms of your um your uh what's it called your loyalty to your country versus your will to survive and whether one is uh is worth more than the other she has a point of view this film has a point of view on that question I'm not going to tell you one way or the other it's really great and it's Clearly, you know, like they talk about how hard it was to film The Revenant. This shit was in the Soviet cold, like, snow. Okay, I bet you they were freezing their fucking butts off making this movie. This was 1977. They didn't have the kind of heating technology we have now. They were probably frozen. This guy, frozen right there? Actually frozen, probably. Um. Anyways, this is a great film. Uh, and often, this, so these are on, I know this one for sure is on... Uh, Hulu and sometimes Criterion puts it for free so uh, you should watch it uh, like I said this has been a really really great year I've loved so many of the films that I watched I hated a few I hated a few if you go through this uh, playlist there's like you could watch me talking about films about women for let's see let's see I'm not sure a lot though let me see how many hours real quick I should have had that ready to go, but it's a lot of hours. You can watch, here we go. According to YouTube, there's 240, this will be 247 videos. I don't think it says how many hours that is, but um, I don't know if each, we're gonna do some math real quick before I close up for the year on my handy dandy 
phone while you guys watch me doing math. Yay, math. Okay. So an average six minutes of video, right? Some of them are a little longer. You could watch me talking about films about women for 26.5 hours if you wanted to. That's over a day. That's a lot. Okay, you probably aren't going to watch 26.5 hours of me talking about films by women, but you could, and that's fabulous. But you should also spend 26.5 hours watching films by women. Uh, I'm not going to say I watched all the best films by women. I haven't even watched all the great films about women. I haven't even seen all the shitty films about by women, but I've seen over 300 this year, and in total probably we're getting close to like five five, six hundred films by women that I've seen. So if you have questions, you know, find me at Old Films Flickr on Twitter. If you have suggestions, if you're like, hey, I like this film. Do you think there's a film by a woman that's similar? I can give you some options. And there are lots of great other resources. Uh, women in Film LA has a bunch of resources on their website. Directed by Women is great. There's so many places for you to find films by women, and you should find them, and you should watch them, and you should support the women who are currently making films, and you should make an effort and it'll be revelatory, I promise. So, Happy New Year. Uh, I'm glad that I ended the year with this wonderful film by this wonderful filmmaker. And I, I know she made several other films, so I'm, hopefully I can find them. Uh, these are the only ones from Criterion, so I don't know if they exist anywhere else. But we'll see. And I will see you in 2016. And if you're wondering what I'm going to watch tomorrow, the answer is Paddington. I have been waiting like 15 months to see Paddington, so hello little talking teddy bear played by Ben Wishaw. Happy New Year to me.